Hello, my ego friends. It worked. It worked for the first time. I managed to get a nice countdown. So every week we're improving. It's so wonderful to have you. And we have a new way of doing things. We're doing Periscope and YouTube at the same time. So I'm absolutely delighted. I'll explain to you how all this is possible. It's new technology. It's staying up, but it's all wonderful. I'll take a step aside and you can see today's agenda. So the t this is the second program already from Talented Talents. And I want to welcome all my friends on YouTube and especially my friends uh, on Periscope. So I got my small uh, screen there. I can see you. Hi, every Zach is there and so on. I saw gentlemen go. So all my friends on, on um, Periscope, thank you so much for being here. So we're going, this show is going to be about one, one and a half hours. And we're going to present a lot of interesting materials it material with news all around um, the United States and Canada, all about eagles and raptors. And we have a very interesting program, so I'll show you. The featured nest today is Hayes in uh, Pennsylvania. And that's really an interesting nest. I had a very interesting interview with Dana, who, by the way, is also here on the um, YouTube stream. I saw him already appearing. So you'll have that featured. And then we'll go and do the um, a second. I've got a wonderful guest here, Kate, and she's sitting at the couch there. I'll show you her in a moment. She's sitting in the back there. So it's my first live guest, my first live guest. I'm absolutely thrilled. She's an absolutely wildlife and nature lover, all the way from Zimbabwe, um, moved uh, actually via New Zealand uh, to Canada. And she's going to talk a bit about her wildlife experience, which we have in Vancouver, much better than me talking about it because I get so passionate. Many people don't believe me how nice it is. Now you hear it from other ears. <laughs> then we'll go on with the usual eagle uh, news all around the country. Uh, all the nest news, as you know, many eggs are being laid. It's all exciting. We just got news from Dale Hollow, by the way. Um, there have been two eggs laid there. I just put in a last minute clip from Dale Hollow. Thank you very much, Jackie, for that really last minute submission. I put it in. And then David Hancock is going to talk this time about the Stellar Eagle. Now, the Stellar Eagle is a phenomenal eagle. I think you're going to love it. This time he's going to talk for just 15 minutes, but the background will surprise you. What he gives on information about uh, the Stellar Eagle is absolutely phenomenal. This man is 80, is going to be 80 on the 1st of April. So I think you'll enjoy this. And finally, I set out this competition uh, just a few days ago called How Crazy Is That? Some of you may have seen it on, the, uh, on my YouTube channel, that's a photo. And the competition was, well, there was a sand shark that I actually photographed here in Boundary Bay as it came in and eagles attacking the sand shark. So the question was, what about your crazy experiences? And there's so many things going on in nests. And my goodness, we had five superb contributions, superb contributions. And I can't wait to show that to you. And it'll be the first time we're testing a poll. So we're going to actually vote which one is best. And then we're going to spin the wheel and we're going to choose the winner is going to get an image. So we have a nice wheel of fortune. All this has been designed. So we're really, I say we, and I'll tell you why we, we're very enthusiastic that all this is possible now. So we bring this to the next level of education. So enjoy it. And um, then we'll have Eagle Quiz time. So it's your time and chance to phone in again and win one of my beautiful images, which I did with so much dedication on eagles. Well, very good. So let's jump ahead now. Uh, let's see, take this one up. And put me there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So I would like to tell you about my talented talents team without Jenny, Nicole, Suzanne and Sherry. Get the chair out of the way. It would be virtually impossible, virtually impossible to do this. Um, Jenny, Nicole, Suzanne and Sherry, you'll see how the quality has increased since I'm not working alone anymore. I was completely flooded with incredible information. So be careful what you wish for. And now I have got Jenny, Nicole, Suzanne and Sherry who do days and days of groundwork to actually make this so smooth as it is now. And hopefully when the technology keeps up and everything works, you should really enjoy this. So thank you. So let's get on with the show. So I'll sit down and um, get the, this out of the way. Um, I'll give you a quick view here. This is how it looks. Um, where are we now? Yeah, I must just get myself out of the way there. There, that's the back view. 
That is the back view of the studio. That's my hand there. And that's Kate. Just wave, Kate. That's Kate. She's sitting there on the guest lounge here in my studio, all ready for later. So you're going to, um, and Kate's going to talk to us about her incredible, um, incredible experiences. Just again, to remind you there, uh, you can have all the images here on the Smug Mug. Uh, I've got my images there if you ever feel like um, doing something nice, helping this. This is all my own funding, completely self-run, not-for-profit, all about education. That's my main thing is to get all the Eagle friends together to get the uh, uh, consciousness about conserving our environment forward, to promote that, to take your topics on board. That is the intention. Very good. Uh, where am I now? Wait a second. Um, I am supposed to be where now? Yes, I'm supposed to jump to, that's right, I'm supposed to jump to Hayes now. So we'll come to our first nest. So let's see if that works. Yes, the very first nest is Hayes uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now you know that's a very industrial place, but it's one of these amazing stories. And um, uh, one of these wonderful four women, they put together the story with me in background in the interview. All lots of work. I hope you'll enjoy it. So here we go. Well, hello, everyone. I'm pleased to have Dana Nesiti here from the Hayes Nest in Pittsburgh. Dana, how are you? I'm doing good, Christian. Thank you. Well, I'm so pleased that I have you here because, Dana, I remember your recent email to me. It was about end December 2017, so just shortly ago, when you introduced me to the Hayes Nest with some interesting background. And before we go into details, can you give me some or give us some insight into your passion involving this nest and how it all started? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, we, I was coming home from work in February 2013, and when I got home, my wife had mentioned she'd seen a story on the local news that there was eagles nesting down in Hayes, which is approximately two miles from my house and I was kind of curious so I got on my bicycle and rode down and sure enough I found the eagles and ever since then I've been hooked I've been going down and uh obviously you know observing them from on the ground and photographing them taking pictures and documenting their uh actions the nest is uh on a hillside a real steep hillside on the back side of uh, woods that's called the Hayes Woods. It's 660 acres. It's the largest undeveloped tract of land in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the nest is on the back side of it, on the hillside. Well, that's, that's interesting. Can you tell us a little bit about the eagle pair? Yeah, the, the male and the female, the, the pair, the speculation is if now they're probably maybe the male 10, 11 years old, the female maybe nine ten because in 2013 their first nesting season the female still had a little bit of uh, brown in her head she wasn't totally white so we don't know for sure so that's just you know a guess on our part interesting now this eagle pair as i learned from you is that's already the third nest since 2013 and there seemed to have been a lot of drama a year ago, exactly a year ago. So what happened since 2013 and what happened last year? Yes, in, in uh, 2013, they, there was no camera on the nest. And we know from watching, we seen them one eaglet. So um, in May of that year is when we seen the eaglet winger size and stretching up in the nest. So we just assumed there was one. Well, in early June, that we had a strong windstorm, and it blew the nest out of the tree, so the eaglet fell out, and it landed in um, a thick spot of wild grapevines, probably about 20 feet below the nest. Now, the uh, adult eagles, they would come and they would feed the eaglet down there. It actually fledged from the vines below the nest. Um, so that's what caused them to build their second nest. So uh, probably on uh, maybe a hundred yards further up the hillside in a big hackberry tree, they started and built the second nest and worked on it, you know, all winter. So that was in going into the 2014 season. That's when they installed the webcam. And then in the 2014 season, we had three A's. And um, 
would be H2, H3, and H4, they call them for Hayes, and then 1, 2, and 3, and then obviously the first one was H1. And that was pretty good. 2014 was a was a good season with the with the three eaglets. They all fledged. Everything was fine. But we did have a little bit of controversy in the 2014 season also. Across the Monongahela River from where the eagle's nest is, there was an abandoned recycle plant. And it had a lot of garbage, so it had a rat problem. So the eagles, being uh, opportunistic, were going over there, the adults, and they were catching the rats and bringing them back. And the city was going to clean it up. They were going to use, you know, poison to poison the rats. But um, all of us citizens around here rallied together and got petitions and went to the mayor and everything. And we actually got them to, you know, use, uh, you know, don't use poison and got rid of the gnats naturally and cleaned the site up and everything. So everything was good. So we didn't, uh, they didn't, you know, we were concerned about the eagles because they were eating the rats. And the, uh, so 2014 went through with three eaglets, beautiful. They hatched. We watched them playing in the river, and, they, you know, in June, um, they fledge. And then sometime in August, first, second week of August, they'll leave the area, and then, you know, we won't see them no more, and, and then it'll go. So in the 2015 season, we had two eggs laid in February, but both eggs cracked and they weren't viable. They didn't make it. So we had no eaglets in the 2015, uh, the 2015 season. In the 2016 season, we had three eggs legs. Again, they were started. First egg was on February 13th and the second egg, February 16th. And then there was a third egg laid on uh, February 20th, but the third egg wasn't viable and it never hatched. So we had two eaglets that year and they fled, and everything was fine. In 2017, that season, that was, boy, we had uh, the first egg was laid on February 10th, and then two days later, the female was sitting on it. On a Sunday evening, we had a bad storm, and the wind came in, and it blew the whole nest tree down um, while the female was sitting on the egg. So on the cam, while we were watching on the cam, you actually seen her sitting on the, on the nest, and then the wind just comes and the tree falls and the eagle flies away. So we lost that egg with the, you know, it was the tree fell. We lost the nest. Well, the very next morning, I met a couple of my friends. We were, you know, at daylight down there to see um, what was going on, and we found both of the adults. They were flying in circles, and they were carrying sticks, and they'd fly over to where the old nest location was, and they were just dropping them, and they were very vocal. You could see that, you know, they were a little bit stressed. They knew something happened, but it, it was just they didn't know what to do. So for probably three days, they, you know, shown that behavior of just flying in circles above where the nest was, just being very vocal. And... um on the the third day after that, they picked the tree and they started building um, a new nest. And within four days, they had a nest pool. And from us watching the, uh, the eagles, we seen the female and we're like, she's exhibiting egg behavior. And sure enough, she she laid an egg. So we would think it was her third egg because. When the tree fell, that was coming right around the time if she was going to lay a second egg, that would have been right around the time when the nest tree fell. So we're, you know, thinking that she expelled that second egg sometime in there, and then after they got the nest pool up, she laid the uh, third egg, and then they successfully hatched out one and fledged an eaglet from there. And there's some pretty dramatic video out there on the web of the eagle falling, you know, the nest tree falling with the eagle in it. Well, that's an incredible story. I mean, coming all the way, you know, from the uh, from the landfill site with the rat poisoning and doing this incredible citizen uh, petition to prevent that, and uh, the drama you had last year. That's an, that's an incredible. I think a unique story. I've never heard anything uh, like that before. Uh, so it's it's interesting. I mean, so the um, the if I remember correctly, the camera was installed in 2014, and then of course when they moved. The, to the third tree, the cameras had to be relocated. 
Uh, how was that done? Yeah, so that was in the December of 2017 this year. Uh, the company CSE Incorporated in conjunction with the Audubon Society of Western Pennsylvania, they got the, you know, they went to the tree where the camera was at, where it was, you know, pointed at the old nest, and then they actually moved it over to the tree where the eagles built the new nest. So, and with the camera in 2014, it was kind of funny too, because we were taking, uh, taking all the pictures of the nest building and everything like that. Well, uh, I come down to the trail to view the nest and a couple of my friends were there and they, they're like, Oh, what did you do? What did you do? And they noticed the camera on the tree behind the nest and they, they're like, ah, you set the camera up. And I'm like, no. So we took pictures of it and actually emailed the Pennsylvania game commission and, you know, they come back and they said, yeah, that's our camera. We're putting it up. And, um, you know, it's been a, a ride since then. It's been really nice. Incredible. So how then is the Nest funded? The, it, it's run by the CSE uh, Incorporated and the Audubon Society to take care of it. Okay. They're, they're the ones that run the camera and do the stream. Well, Dana, this is an incredible story. Please feel free to contribute lots of images, especially now. Uh, where the um, you know where the eggs are soon to be due, and then the hatching hopefully uh, comes along, and who knows, maybe we even have three eaglets. Is there anything else you would like to add? Yeah, this the hay's nest is is close to my house, and this is my favorite nest. But along the rivers here in Pittsburgh, we do have um, three other nests. We have one down on the Ohio River which is on the outside of Pittsburgh. We have one on the Allegheny River, which is the Harbor Nest. That one has a webcam too. And then there's a, on the Yawkagany River, there is um, another nest. So probably within the 20 mile radius of downtown Pittsburgh, we have four eagle nests, which is really phenomenal. If you can consider Pittsburgh history of being the steel city and you know, back in the 70s and the 60s with the steel mills and, you know, the rivers, how, you know, the, the cleanliness of the rivers, how they came along. It's just a great success story. Well, that's wonderful to hear, especially the initiative that you took there at the, uh, at the landfill site. Well, Dana, that's an incredible story. So please keep, keep sending us all the updates and information. Everybody listening here is going to be absolutely fascinated by this story. So thank you so much for taking the time and uh, hope to hear a lot more from you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. Thank you so much. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm very pleased to um, introduce you to Kate. And Kate's come all the way from Vancouver. <laughs> oh, from Richmond. <laughs> from Richmond. And it's very nice to have Kate here because Kate absolutely loves the environment here. And um, she's actually had a very interesting background. Kate, can you tell us a little bit about the background here so that our viewers understand where you come from? Um, thank you so much for having me on your show, Christian. That's um, a pleasure. I'm, it's a pleasure. I'm, it, I'm very honored mm -hmm. to be here because I've been a big fan of your work for many years. And well, I, think, thanks, thanks. I think it was one of your eagle photos mm -hmm. that got me interested in photography. Right. Um, I, I, I'm a New Zealand citizen, but I grew up, I was born and grew up in Zimbabwe. Right. Um, and um, I've always had an interest mm -hmm. in, in wildlife and nature. But sadly, when I was in Africa, I, did, uh, I took it for granted. Mm -hmm. um, it was only when I got to um, Canada and British Columbia, I realized how important it was to protect our natural resources and the environment. Right. And just tell us a little bit about that. I mean, how did you, you know, if you look at Kate's Instagram in the back and you I, I was paging through it, I was absolutely surprised because it's been raining all January. And what does Kate She's out there. She's out there. It's rains and pours and pours. And as a mm. person from Zimbabwe, which is north of South Africa, you're mm. used to very warm weather, not so much in New Zealand. But I was absolutely amazed. So what got you so interested in wildlife? Um, I, I was just taking my, my daily walk around, around the nature parks in mm -hmm. Richmond and I would sort of noticed the birds and the coyotes and right. um, uh, uh, even the trees and, and, and the flowers. And then... Um, it's, it started making an impact on me. Um, mm -hmm. 
when I went, especially when I saw the amount of rubbish, and uh, right, I became right. a little bit concerned, and I and I, and I became quite passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And my family, I have a very supportive family who bought me a camera, and they, um, I started just documenting it, and then I'd upload my images every day to um, to Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and my Facebook accounts. Yeah, you have um, quite a lot of followers, I saw. I mean, you've been doing um, a lot there, right? Uh, they, they're fantastic. <laughs> they, they keep me going. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to show uh, this. Yeah. This, is a, this is my favorite one. Um, I, I absolutely love this clip. Let's see if it's going to oh. start now. Whoops. It's not. No, it's not starting. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, let's try again. It's supposed to start but it doesn't want to for some reason. Okay. Okay, well, never mind. Um, le let's go ahead, but what is beautiful uh, about this uh, this video, it is actually shows how a peregrine catches a duck. Right? It, it does. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, cruel in a way, but this is the circle mm -hmm. of life. This is nature in action, yeah. Right, and it's not it's not easy. I mean, I've seen peregrine falcons before, but yet you actually caught it catching a duck is I did. Uh, is, it was is, it was, is, it was is, very exciting. Is is <laughs> is quite stunning, and you have another one, and I hope this one starts. At the oh. moment, they don't want to start for some reason. Yeah, this oh. one is working. This one seems to be oh, working. That's, that's um, beautiful. Yeah, that I'm not sure, but that's a, of course a red-tailed yeah, hawk. And and he screams quite nicely for me. <laughs> but I'm I'm not sure if he's telling me to get out of the way or. He's just talking to me. He's um, just talking to you. But you got over um, 300,000 views on that. I saw it's a remarkable. Do yes, you have any idea amazing. why it got so popular? Uh, um, uh, I think maybe something to do with um, the movies mm, at the moment. Right. And, and he's, they've taken his call and put it on eagles. Right. And they right. seem to have mistaken the red tail scream for mm -hmm. an eagle call in some of the mo popular oh, movies. Oh, that's what it is. And, and, that's and, what and it then, is. then people right. start talking, oh, but this is a red tail hawk. So it's quite interesting. That's funny. That's it funny. is. It is. It's very. And let's funny. see if this one is maybe. Started. Well, it does. Oh, first, not. Well, that's anyway. That is. Yep. Of course, the famous mm -hmm. Delta Nest, right? Ah, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, what oh, brought you to oh, the Delta Nest? Ah, oh, the ah, uh, the mm -hmm. eagles. The, the eagles. eagles brought me to the nest. Um, it is just so exciting watching them, um, especially, especially during winter, and right. um, you watch them making their nests, uh -huh. bu building it up, putting new sticks, and then you wait for the little bobblehead babies, the little fuzzy heads. <laughs> I oh, really know so, all about that. Oh, I know you that. do, I know you do. Oh, so what, just, what makes Vancouver so special for you? Um, I've lived in some beautiful places. Uh -huh. Zimbabwe mm -hmm. is spectacular. New Zealand mm -hmm. right. is, is, is beautiful. But uh, Vancouver and British Columbia have stolen my heart. It's just, it's just, it's just so beautiful. It's just incredible. Huh? Um, been on the Pacific Flyway, mm -hmm. we get all the mig migratory birds and um, right. and the raptors that follow them, and so there's always always something going on, and it's just absolutely spectacular. That's to interesting watch. you say that because I find it fascinating when I go, go with David Hancock to Boundary Bay, and you see yeah. these huge flocks of, of birds, yeah, exactly, oh, just, which, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. And um, David Hancock actually told me that during um, high tide they stay only in the air because beca yes. because it's it's it seems to be easier for them. Right? Yes, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's incredible. I, I videoed no. some and it's just oh, it just takes my breath away. It's just absolutely beautiful. So let's see what mm. camera gear you use because you oh, are right. you are the the ultra um, <laughs> how should I say um, minimalist, which am, really uh, which is well, amazing. I, I'm no which expert is amazing. in anything. No, no, but, go on. Don't don't, but, don't be so. Uh, but. Um, <laughs> I find this uh -huh. it's a uh, Canon power uh -huh. shot. It's very simple, it up a bit. very, oh, very simple so, to use. Um, so that's a Canon. I'm just going to yeah. try and zoom in a little okay. bit more so they can see that. So yeah. that's what you're using. You, yes, that's it's a Canon um, power shot, right? Yes. Very light. Very light, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it has a very good zoom. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in, endangering any wildlife, but I can get yes. right close up to them. So. Uh, this is just a directional mic. Um, and that's really important, I, right? I, I the like directional catching, mic is really important, right? I like right. catching the sounds and the, all the songs. And I, I use a monopod. Oh, yeah, and, show, and, show us the monopod. I never use a monopod. That's uh, interesting. Well, um, uh -huh. I find a tripod a bit heavy, but the right. monopod is nice and light, and I can just carry it with me. And for so your videos, uh, I mean, for um, example, yes. when you were following well, the, uh, the peregrine falcon, yeah. did you use the monopod for that? Uh, yes, it all right. attaches. This is sort of, a, right. it's like a gimbal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
um, and I can adjust it and it moves up and down. It mm -hmm. swivels on there like that. Oh. So it's sort of like a gimbal, but it's not, not a, yeah, yeah. a proper gimbal. And that just attaches to the monopod here. That's you know, so interesting to see because people use all kinds of different techniques. Yes. I, I, mm. This is all nice and simple mm -hmm. and it's what works for me and I really enjoy it. It's wonderful. Yes, and that just and then I extend those legs and then I can take and I can swivel and I can do all sorts of things. So tell me, what was your most exp uh, most interesting experience in, 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 uh, in wildlife that you've had? What, if you had to say a story, wow, what would it be? What's, what's the wow story? Oh, my wild story <laughs> is the peregrine so catching the, one, the duck. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The one that um, I wanted it to just show. But it took yeah. my breath away. It was just, um, it's one of the few of my videos that I actually talk mm -hmm. um, because I, uh, I prefer to keep the nature sounds in. Right. But I was so excited when it actually grabbed the duck. I, <laughs> couldn't believe it. it was it's so exciting and um that's probably my um most exciting but equally rewarding are all uh -huh. all watching all the baby birds the right, uh, and and right. the baby coyotes watching them take their first steps uh all the baby hawks baby Ace. cooper's hawk and right. the owls watching the baby great so you, horned owls climb in the trees oh it's, it's incredible it's so rewarding it's just uh Yes. Would you, would you yes. say f uh, Vancouver, from all the places you've been to, is mm -hmm. your favorite wildlife place? Would it you is. Go as far it as is. That? Really? Uh, yes, yeah. I would. Um, Africa, of course, is. Yeah, yeah. It ju <laughs> is, is just a whole <laughs> actually a whole, a whole oh a whole nother, <laughs> a whole nother, a whole nother game. But yes. because um, yes. uh, 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 Vancouver mm -hmm. is so accessible, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. so easy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and it's it's in my neighborhood park. Yes, it is, it I don't is, have to travel is. miles with a safari guide. I, it's right here. Uh, it's just and 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 mm. you know the mm. most important that is close to all of our hearts here is mm. wildlife conservation. It is. So it is. what uh, you know what have you seen here in Vancouver? Because many people think Vancouver is very clean, everything's fine. But you oh, have no. seen some things yeah. that seem to have alarmed you. Tell us. Uh, well, a lot mm -hmm. of rubbish and litter, ah. plastics in the environment, damaging and killing. Uh, killing right. wildlife it, right. and the pollution. It's when it's you say very pollution, do you, can you be more specific? Uh, pollution in in the waterways, oh, in the waterways and yes, in the river, absolutely, in, absolutely. in the drainage ditches. People just throw their their Starbucks cups and their their uh, uh, rubbish no, and right, plastic. Right. It's it's and there is bins everywhere. Um, the Vancouver City Council is very good at putting bins, but people right, people people they are blind to it. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. it's very sad. And of course. Wildlife gets into it, and then mm -hmm. this causes problems, and it's it's tragic. And yeah, I, com I completely mm. agree with you. Yeah. Well, Kate, you, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yes, I'd like to. I'd like to talk about how mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, there's several. I'm not. I'm not alone in my in my passion right. for this. Right. Well, that's good. Go ahead. Uh, can I carry on? Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, We're all interested. Of course, you can carry there's, on. There's um, a lot of ethically minded photographers mm -hmm. in Vancouver. Um, who do great work. They put out the most fantastic photographs mm -hmm. on Instagram and right. and I've met a few of them and they're very good about educating mm -hmm. novice photographers to, to keep right. away from like the snowy uh -huh. out, keep your distance, don't don't encroach on their space. Exactly. Give, give them space. Exactly. That's what we have mm -hmm. big lenses for and, yes. and, and it yes, doesn't have to right. be expensive, right? No, no it doesn't. It's, it doesn't, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of other groups that mm -hmm. do great work. David Hancock, as, yes, of as you know, and Owl <laughs> sure. Rehab. Rehab and, Owl, yes. Yep, yeah, in Delta, right. they, uh -huh. they not only rehabilitate the injured and orphan wildlife, um, educating people mm -hmm. is a large part of their vision. Um, who else? The Pacific Parklands Foundation Trust. Right. They work with the Metro Vancouver Regional Parks, right. which, which I visit a lot. They Good. educate people on mm -hmm. how to... Uh, mm -hmm. um, watch wildlife safely mm -hmm. and keep your dogs on leashes and things like that which are very important so i'm definitely not, not alone in my passion um and on a broader scale uh -huh. one last thing yeah, sure, um, i'd sure. like to just mention how much i respect um and support ian McAllister and right. pacific wild right who he, mm -hmm. he does fantastic work mm -hmm. and stopping the trophy hunt of grizzly bears and wolves yeah, in northern yeah, bc yeah, yeah, and yeah. he has my full support and it's Whereas I, I just document in my, in mm -hmm. my back, backyard mm -hmm. almost, in my neighborhood parks, but it right. all starts at home. And that's, 
that's what I, I want to say is that you, even even with simple gear you can do, you can you can do phenomenal stuff. Yeah, yeah but you have right. to be interested, like and passionate. Oh, you see a lot, oh, won't you? Oh, <laughs> if, if you're passionate, it, it appears it does, before it you. Does, so it it's does, it's it awesome. Does. Yeah, we're we are we're incredibly fortunate here we in are. Vancouver. I, I I completely agree. Well, Kate, um, what I want to finally give you as a small gift and. Let's just see if this is going to work. It's the first time. It's also something these wonderful women who helped me here have designed. Look at this. This is a wheel, and we're going to spin this wheel now. And oh, uh, you're going to say stop. It's going okay. to stop. And those, that's the image you can take oh, home. Oh, thank I'm you so you much. I'm going to give you a digital image. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, I will. I so will. I'll just make ourselves a little bit smaller. Let's see if I can uh, do that right there. There we okay. go. You see, they will okay. disappear completely. <laughs> so I'm going to spin it, and you okay. just call stop. So just wait a bit. Okay. Let it spin and then you call stop. Stop. Oh, okay, oh that's that the, is beautiful. That is the Alaskan one. I'll quickly oh, show lovely. you which one that is. Let's see if I can bring it up. Let's see. That is the Alaskan one, which is... Yes, it should oh, be beautiful. this one. Let's see oh, if I thank can... Thank you so much. Let's, no, that's yes, fine. Let, yes. let me see if I can manage to get this up here. On the screen? On the screen, there it is. Oh, so that, that is, is that, that, that is the uh, that is the Alaskan one, one yes. Oh, so um, I, yeah. So congratulations. Thank so you so much. Get that high resolution digital oh, image, and thank, thank you, you for being here. Now we just have to remove the microphone yep. very carefully, so you don't walk away. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So I'm just going to put it here like this at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Thanks so much. So just give me a second because now we're going to go on to the nests. Whilst I have to re... Okay, here we go. That's it. Fine. Well, that was wonderful having Kate on. That's my first, first, for us a photo, the first uh, live guest. And I hope there'll be many more. Um, if you do come, you will be getting a wine and you're getting good snacks, pizza and everything. Uh, I'll be sure to entertain you very well. So um, let's get the chair out of the way. So be sure that you take the opportunity and come and visit me. You're most anyone is most welcome who's interested in wildlife and the conservation. Okay, so let's go on now. And the next topic is the nests, of course. Now come the now come the story of all the nests. And um, you know who's really special this week uh, with absolute incredible contributions is Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. You have been overwhelming contributions from everywhere. We were surprised. The first contribution here, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to, uh, I need to get myself out of the way completely here. It's better. There we go. Make it, make it just small. Uh, go back to the DC nest. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. So the first, this is very nice. So that is the first one. So we're going to go through the nest now. This is Mr. President arriving at nest with stick. So this was all very recent. So this is one picture. Thank you very much. Um, Janet from Bo oh, well, we know Janet's wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uh, Janet's wonderful um, submission. But I think this was also submitted by Mary on behalf of Janet. I'm not quite sure how that how that worked. But Janet, by the way, if you ever feel like and I know you're you're live now, I saw you in the chat already. Don't forget us, you know, send your videos in and links and so on, because we have, you know, got this wonderful team now and we just love to engulf anybody's uh, contribution here. So you're most welcome. And uh, let's go on now. So the next one is, yeah, that's also Janet here. That's right. All these are from Janet. And she says here, let me just see that. Uh, that is, oh yeah, he's flying in now. There he goes. You see him behind. There's the arrow. Okay, very nice. And I think the pictures are a little bit muddled up. I apologize because they came in. So let me just get, go through there, uh, through Janet's uh, uh, pictures quickly. So he's flying around there anti-clockwise. You can see that. So this time I get it right. There he comes in, Janet. Sorry about that. Now I got, now I got the images in the correct sequence. So there he comes. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, we can see him. We can see him come in. Very nice. And there he's about to land the typical stall. And there's image eight out of eight. There he is. Beautiful. Very nice uh, from Janet. Thank you for that submission. Beautiful. And now we come to the other. Sorry, I got those two mixed up. But this is Kathy's 
uh, who's done a lot of nests here. Now this is also from Janet, everything from Janet. Gosh, we've got so many things here. That is also from Janet. Another one. Yes, that's a different sequence here. That is a different sequence. That is really beautiful. Here we have the First Lady, of course. And those are incredible close-ups. Thanks, Janet. Yes, that was a last-minute submission. I remember this very well. Ah, uh, there's Mr. President. My goodness. You talk about hairdo, right? <laughs> That's incredible. Ah, uh, Mr. President, aren't you beautiful? Ah, uh, there's, a, there's, the, um, there's a beautiful sunrise here. Hi there, very, very recent. We, did, we had no such beautiful weather uh, here in our area. And that is an incredibly, look at that, that is another sunrise. Thank you so much, Janet. So all the contribution here comes from Janet from the DC Nest. Thank you so much. Really beautiful. So now we come to the Florida Nest. So next one is the Florida Nest. And of course, and here come some beautiful, I mean, it's, it's wonderful to see, see all this competition between the nests. Here you see another beautiful collage, this time by Carolyn, who made this incredibly beautiful collage. And uh, this is all about Juliet there. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? What a beautiful collage you did there really incredible and the next one ah oh, i don't know what happened there it looks a little bit strange maybe the image didn't quite come through i'm not sure about that one but here that's from peggy northeast florida nest thank you so much there is your dream pair romeo and juliet isn't that beautiful with a with a mist behind and this is also incredible look at this one here that is by, ah, oh, that is Jan, Janny or Janny. I always get your name, I always say that. Jan, forgive me. That is, uh, that is another beautiful for one of uh, Romeo here. And another one of Romeo. And uh, yeah, the writing's a little bit too small for me here to, to, to see it, but I, uh, but that is Tatine, of course. Tatine, I think I'm going to meet you. That's going to be very interesting to, to see. You're one of the mods, of course, at the, uh, at the Northeast Florida nest. And that's another beautiful collage here of Romeo this time. So we had Juliet and this time it's another one of Romeo also by Carolyn. Thank you so much. And next one, that is from Kathy. Now finally Kathy gets the credit. <laughs> we talk about Kathy all the time because I saw so many contributions from Kathy. Well here you go Kathy. <laughs> There's Romeo bringing in a huge bronze. <laughs> oh, very nice. And here is another one from Tatine. That's Romeo again. So our little ones here are now six weeks old. Six weeks, when was it? Was it 9th and 11th of December, if I remember correctly? Somewhere around there. Uh, so yeah, that was Gretchen, of course, my friend Gretchen. Wonderful contribution. I, have, I mean, this is superb, the way they look at each other. So there you are with Sky and Spirit. And another one from Sky and Spirit. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? Here's Kathy. Both of them looking up. Well, you can imagine what they're seeing up there. It's completely, they're probably seeing food approaching. Beautiful contribution. Ah, uh, and here's another co collage here from Carolyn again. And that is the whole family. That's the new family. Thank you so much. So Sky, Spirit, Romeo and Juliet, what a beautiful contribution. Thank you so much. That was Northeast Florida. You see what, how much it matters to us. Um, really, I wanted to thank all of you. Please continue contributing. We love to show your work. We love to show everything. It's, it's such a joy to share this with everyone. And you know, this is what it's all about. It's sharing and making people aware what a beautiful uh, uh, what a beautiful nature and wildlife we have and how lucky we are and now we come to the berry nest and here is Kathy again with a berry nest so let me just jump into the berry nest here one second okay now I hope this is going to work this time because I have been a bit unlucky with all these ah this one is working yes this is of course Belladonna what a name, Belladonna. There you go.
Belladonna, this is a marvelous, uh, really a marvelous uh, contribution. Thank you so much. Yeah, there is no sound with this. This is uh, to be soundless and I, I uh, don't want to comment, so I just switch my microphone off. Yeah, we, we, just for people asking where the sound is, this has no sound. the nest and that just came in late afternoon to early fall. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Sorry, that was looping. That's the next one. So we are, we are back now. This is Max Hester's contribution here. So again, I mean, Max, you know very well. I don't know if Max has ever been on the show, but I'd certainly like to meet Max one day. He takes these marvelous images just like Gina and many others do, Tatine and so on. And I mean, there's so many beautiful images. So this is all from Barry. Dad, here's Charles. Charles Lohmeyer, I hope I pronounced that correctly, that was 2015, another beautiful takeoff. And there's some superb photographers here. And here is Mum, that's from Charles in 2016. And here another one from 2015, beautiful flight shot. Ah, now comes Gina's contribution. Yes, so you can read this, I don't, um, but Pa had some kind of injury, so um, uh, I think that that injury is a lot better now on his, on his foot, but Mama still has quite an injury. The wing positions, yes, yes. There you go. This is a series of images taken after poor Pa had been sitting on the eggs for six hours. Wow. Ah, that's beautiful. Um, that's a beautiful takeoff. There you go. Created by Nicole and Sasha. Well, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, Nicole, uh, all of you, Nicole, um, Jani, Suzanne uh, and um, gosh, what am I saying? And Sherry, yes, Sherry, they've all contributed a lot to make this possible. 
So thank you so much. So let's go to the next one. And this is the Berry Eagles added lots of fluff before the freeze. Yeah, we'll talk about that was one of the listener questions here, what extreme temperatures um, eagles can withstand. So we'll get back to that topic. So that was the berry. Now we come to the big bear. That's an interesting one. So that's to California. That was Kathy again. You see how many contributions we get from Kathy this week. So that's the big bear nest. So the weather has drastically improved there, you can see. So there are two eggs, really exciting. You remember the one that, uh, the, I mean, the um, contribution that we got from Lady Hawk. That was incredible. And let's go to the southwest, southwest. You know, it's so funny, I just have to tell you quickly, sometimes I get these comments, hey, Christian, you seem to be favoring the southwest nest, or you're, being sav you're, you're favoring Barry or northeast. I've got a lot of complaints. You know, it's very simple. I, uh, we accept any beautiful images, contributions uh, that, you, that you submit. So there's no favoritism here. It's all about eagles. So here you go, Kathy says, Air plants, uh, uh, air, air plants shades, okay, from the eagles. <laughs> that's a funny one. That's a really funny one. And here you can see the wing development, isn't it? So the primary, so you can see the alula. We'll talk about the alula uh, when we get to the flight feathers uh, in, in one of the later sessions, because the alula plays a big role, of course. And you can see how incredibly quickly this, this transition now, uh, this is where they really reach the maximum uh, rate, if you remember that, the, the, the maximum growth rate. That's what they're in now, developing all these, all the feathers at an incredible rate now. And there you go. Um, so they said that E11 can be identified, if you look on the top of the image, by a spot there. Uh, that spot won't uh, be there much longer, but for now it is. Yes, they help us spread the moss. Look at these oversized clown, <laughs> clown feet. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy, for all these beautiful contributions. Isn't that looking straight into to the camera already? It's a real show. Uh, a show boy or show, a show girl. Very nice. So let's jump up again and now we come to the trionest. I'm so glad that we get something from the trionest because there's so much going on. And again, Kathy, thank you for that. Lunchtime at the trionest nest. And you can see how incredible this is because, I mean, this is the only um, uh, nest where I know, apart from the uh, California nest, where we have cameras and we can actually watch a trial. So it's, it's, uh, it's really special. It's really special. Patty Willis trial. They barricaded the left side of the nest. That is the side I remember. The intruders normally entered last season. Do you think it is really good planning on their part? But of course, <laughs> I love that. I, you know, I love that passion. Very nice. And let's hope this one works. I don't know, I've been a little bit of problems here with showing some things, but this is trios mating. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work, which would be a pity. No, they don't seem to be working. I am um, sorry about that, but that is a nice, uh, that is, uh, that is a nice, um, uh, that is a nice uh, video. It's just somehow not loading. I'm not sure why. Um, it all worked yesterday. That's all I can say, but uh, pity. It's, uh, this is a really beautiful uh, clip. Pity, pity we can't. And it's actually, a, 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 it's, it's, it's mating in the trial nest, which is really beautiful. Yeah. Okay, anyway, let's move on. It is what it is. Uh, now we come to other nests. So the first nest that we're going to look at is Decora. Again, from, <laughs> from Kathy, disagreement over placement. Yeah, this is so typical. Even in the snow, there's a lot of disagreement over placement. I don't know if Ma usually wins. So you can see that there's a lot of disagreement here of where to place something. And here, this is from Teresa. Uh, that's a nice one. Uh, uh, Avon, is that? I don't know how you pronounce it. Avon or Avon Lake, uh, Ohio. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Dad doing a nose dive. Thank you for that. That's a very recent image. Thank you, Teresa, for this very nice contribution. So that makes the other nests. Now we do have one more that was just submitted. Yes, this works. Thank goodness this works. It was Dale, Dale Hollow. Jackie just brought this in. And this is working. 
So there have been two eggs this week uh, from Dale Hollow, so it's a big thing. And we just, I just received this 30 minutes before, uh, you know, before the show started. So this is tremendous. You see two um, two eggs, and um, so let's look back in from from now in 35 days, and we should see some hatching. Um, are there any opinions on a possible third egg at Dale Hollow? This is quite uh, this is qu this is quite a big thing. Really beautiful contribution. Thank you, Jackie. We could take that in really at the last moment. Okay, and then we move to something really interesting, and, and it might not load again, but there were several of you who submitted this scene from, uh, and, and the video is supposed to be working, but it doesn't. Um, somehow it it's just says, I'm not going to work today, well that's fine. So I, I think, um, yeah, well it's complaining anyway, it's complaining it's not working and so on, but never mind. Uh, the scene is quite incredible because these eagles are taking a casual ride on ice through the Mississippi and it's gone all through the news so do Google this um, I think we have a link too we have a link ah it is uh, okay so we we, uh, we we do have a link for this but the playback is not working unfortunately pity about that okay never mind so this brings us to the uh, to the next session which is really interesting and this is all about the stellar eagle and well, the stellar eagle is absolutely phenomenal um, it is much bigger than our bald eagle and it is mainly in certain regions of Japan and Kamchatka, which is eastern Russia, a phenomenal area. But no person better that I could find and know than David Hancock to talk about this subject. So without any further ado, look at this beautiful bird. So again, we're talking about sea eagles all the different types of sea eagles, and this week we're covering stellar eagles. This was recorded yesterday. Talk today about which eagle? Well, I thought we'd talk about the stellar sea eagle, which is really the biggest, most spectacular of all the eagles. I mean, which of course. I I want to start with some shots that we took on the very first year we were involved with with live streaming video. This was the chap who introduced us to the topic. That bird in the back, in the foreground, of course, is an adult bald eagle. And you take a look for a moment as to right. the size of that bird that's in the background. Now that's behind it. Yes. And that's an adult. Oh now, my goodness. this is another bald eagle off to the right. It's that huge. Bird, that bird is a, probably a male bald eagle, but look at the tiny little bald eagle compared to the size of crazy. what we think is possibly a stellar sea eagle, or it's a hybrid, a crossbred between a stellar's and a bald eagle, which we think for six years did mate and breed near, near Juneau, Alaska, on the Taku Glacier at the base of it. And if they did and they produced young, it's possibly... Oh, look at yeah, that. This is, this is an That's awesome, incredible. absolutely awesome... So you're talking awesome about British Columbia here, right? Yes, this, this is it. This, these photos were taken by school kids using the, the pan tilt zoom camera at Goldstream right near Victoria. That is crazy. Yeah, it, it, was crazy. A, it was a wonderful introduction of, of streaming cams to me to see this. And it was taken by kids looking through and just zooming in on it, they didn't know what they were zooming. But interestingly enough, we've had a good friend of mine who's a world expert on right. birds of prey, uh -huh. Bill, uh, Bill uh -huh. Clark, who's right. written many books on birds of prey around the world. Mm -hmm. We gave him this and he wrote a paper on it. Right, right. And he concluded it perhaps by looking at the details uh -huh. right. of the plumage, uh -huh. it is not actually a pure Stellar sea eagle. Right. Possibly what it is, is, is a hybrid. But yet, boy, it took on the, the biological characters of this oh, other incredible. giant because it's just a, 
a huge, huge well, bird. David, this is phenomenal footage. I, I, it's, it's, I, think, I think the viewers will agree this is absolutely insane. Well, <laughs> it's crazy. So let's just expand a bit about the size of that bird. It, okay. It's, it's um, mm -hmm. 10 to 20, 21 pounds. Our big bald eagles right, are 12, right, 13, right. 14 pounds. Right, so that's this a, is a 20, bird. 21 yeah, pound yeah, right, bird. Right. It has a six and a half to seven and a half foot wingspan over two and a bit meters long. I mean, it's one of the biggest eagles. Interestingly enough, the other bird that can be sometimes <laughs> seen with, we'll talk about another day, is the right. white-tailed eagle, oh, lives right, in the right. same area, uh -huh. right across okay. Eurasia into England. And that bird has almost the same length of wings, but it doesn't have the weight of this but, great stellar. But obviously stellar. you never had anything to do with stellar eagles, did you? I did, did yes, you, I, I kind of, <laughs> I did have a Stellars and a white-tailed sea eagle way back in the 1960s. I had them in a sense given to me. Really? But because, well, at that stage, I used to have a large rehabilitation center and I would get not only all the eagles and, and, and the seals right, right. and the bears and the cougars, right. but I would have to get rid of these. So I would send them off to other people around the world. And in trade, somebody gave me back a Stellars and a, and a white-tailed sea eagle. That's and I incredible. felt they were, they were not incredible. in captivity. Nobody had them. So I thought these are far better off in the San Diego Zoo. So I organized that they went directly from Europe, Eurasia, to, to, the, to the San Diego <laughs> Zoo. And so it's one of the reasons we know that they take five years to right. mature. Their bird took five years uh -huh. to get... The, this mature plumage and the big bright yellow beak and the white wings, upper wings, uh, white covets, which is interesting. You, you see this bird here, the Stellars, is having right. not just the orange beak, but the white uh, upper and lower wing uh, white spatulates there. There is a version of the Stellars that doesn't have that. It, oh. It's called the blonde or pale version. Right. Right. And it lacks the white, so right. it's kind of kind of drab compared. But there are now two birds that bred right. uh -huh. in a captivity in a zoo in the eastern United States. They were both the normal, had the right. white right. wings, right. and when they bred, they right. produced an offspring that was a pale version. So it's obviously a recessive gene. It isn't a separate <laughs> subspecies, as was not one time thought. It's a, a, a bird of the, uh, just a morph, mm -hmm. it's called, a, a, the pale morph meaning a different color phase. So where, where do we find these birds? I'm just going to pull up well, a map here. Yeah, very, restri <laughs> very restricted range. Right, right. I mean, if, if this is right. the Kamchatka Peninsula here. Right. Uh, the, the, the way up here mm -hmm. is the Aleutian Islands. Alaska is off, uh, I can't quite reach yeah, yeah. Alaska up there. Right, right. But the Alaska, uh, mm -hmm. the Aleutian Islands comes all the way down here and the end, the, Alaska Russian border is about here. And so this last island is really Bering Island uh, oh, right. in, in the Komondorsky Islands in Russia. Right, right. And they breed there. And then they breed all along the Kamchatka Peninsula, around the great arc of the Sea of Okhotsk, all the oh, way wow. around here, right, right, right. down to Sakhalin mm -hmm. Island. Mm -hmm. And this is also here, just above behind mm -hmm. my head, which is w w Japan and then the Korean Peninsula, just behind my head. That's their wintering grounds. They don't breed right, right. In the, on the Korean Peninsula or, mm -hmm. or in southern Japan, mm -hmm. but they will winter there. Just like we get, mm -hmm. we have a good breeding population of baldies here, right, but we right. get tens of thousands mm -hmm. that winter here. Mm -hmm. They only get the wintering birds down there. Well, wow. So, mar a marvelous bird. It was named, mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of yeah, interesting, right. named the Stellar's mm -hmm. Sea Eagle. Mm -hmm. well, Stellars mm -hmm. was one of the great naturalists of the world in the right. middle 1700s. In fact, in 1741, mm -hmm. he was with the Russian Exploration mm -hmm. Company exploring mm -hmm. the Aleutian mm -hmm. Islands, and he got lo uh, right. landed on that little island, Bering Island. He was working for, for the, the great scientist, uh, the uh, mm -hmm. captain, navigator, Mr. Bering, Vitus Bering, there you go. And he got right, he got stuck uh -huh. Uh -huh. on that little island over winter, and so he made the world's only observations mm -hmm. of Stellar's Stellar, same name after right. him, sea 
cow, a five to six thousand pound animal, in fact, five to six ton right. animal that's like a sea cow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And nobody else had ever seen them since. And he sat on a whole winter looking down at, an, at a bay full of these things and stellar sea eagles. And he described their behavior. The rest of the world thought he was nuts. Nobody ever found them into the fifth, you know, 1800s. And they were, except they then found right. some bones in the Indian middens. And so they realized that the Indians knew of this big sea cow. <laughs> and so he not only had his name given to the stellar sea cow, to the stellar right. eagle, but funny enough, mm -hmm. our provincial bird is the stellar's jay. That's Stellar's Jay. Jay. Right. And it's named after him as this great naturalist well, because he's the first naturalist to see the Stellar's Jay as, it, as he got into Alaska. So let's take a closer <clears throat> map here. Uh, uh, so there, the, there's the bay. The that's, the that's the, the up mm -hmm. there uh -huh. is, is the Kamchatka Peninsula, right. the, the great volcanic area. I mean, there are more volcanoes yeah. on, on that little peninsula than that's, anywhere else. And then it, right. going around yeah. the bay is mm -hmm. the, this is the water, it's called the Sea of Akats. Mm -hmm. And that's the very much along the shoreline, just the same mm -hmm. as with our bald eagles. They're where there is a seashore. Right. They right. live right. on fish. They're just an oversized <laughs> bald eagle. And then in the winter, right. as, the, as the snow, or the, the freezing level, forces ice over that whole area, they get forced out. And so they move south into, into northern parts of Japan, island oh, of right. Ahoka. Most of the photographs of stellar sea eagles yes. are taken right there on these islands oh. in Japan. And you have some wonderful photos. I don't need... Yeah, just I was, show them yeah the there they are right yes, now. Yes, yes. And these are all taken just off the north end of, of Hokkaido Island. Right. Um, just a... An, an incredible bird. I mean, the, the kazoo or the beak on this bird is just enormous. And there's those lovely white upper and lower wing covets, um, which are not on the pale morph. And that's why it was thought to be a different species for many right. years. And then they found out that if you take two of the proper ones, breed them together, you can come up with a pale morph. So it, it's really just a, a variation. Yeah, the wingspan is incredible. Yeah. You can see that seven, seven and a half feet. Yeah. Or, so, so naturally, a, a bird this big has a kind of spiritual context All to right. native people. Mm -hmm. And the Ainu, the, the, the native people of Japan, put it into their culture. And it's believed all down the west coast of, of North America, in, in, in the Alaska and British Columbia coast, the seven different linguistic tribes right. all speak of Thunderbird. And it's thought that Thunderbird, which is mm -hmm. definitely a distinct creature to the bald eagle, because right, they know right. the eagle both as a spiritual and, a, and as a real bird, but the Thunderbird was different. And it's believed that mm -hmm. the legends of Thunderbird might relate to the presence, the occasional presence, right. of so, well, seeing stellar sea lines. They wouldn't sense. see it so regularly. That's what made it rare and a bit more spiritual. So it. it this could be the source the of, of, of Thunderbird. Interesting. So uh, one, one other interesting thing about <laughs> Vitus Bering in, in that year he spent, um, he was a really slick, uh, more than just a naturalist, he got himself onto the boat with Vitus Bering, and they were funded by Mr. Messerschmitt, a very oh, famous German <laughs> name. They, he funded their expeditions. Oh, that's and when Mr. Messerschmitt died, Yes. Vitus had the presence of mind to go and marry his widow. <laughs> so that was a, so he, he got continued he got continued support as a, as a naturalist. Kind of kind of a funny side story. All right. So um, today, where where are we today with this bird? I mean, mm -hmm. it has that small geographic area just around right. the Sea of Okans. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big geographic area like all the continent of North America for, for the bald eagle or the all Eurasia, mm -hmm. Europe, Europe and Asia right. for the white-tailed eagle. Right. It's just in that little area. Mm -hmm. And it's considered a potentially endangered area, a species, a threatened species, because there's not very many. Probably at the moment, between five and six thousand birds. Right, right. That's not a huge population, mm -hmm. but it's believed it's somewhat like the bald eagle in the sense that mm -hmm. it suffers from mm -hmm. people cutting down the shoreline trees because they want trees everywhere. And of course, the 
Yeah, right. Eagle wants to be up. Also, there is a still a threat. The kind of threat that we had in North America for mm -hmm. bald eagles, where as a predator, mm -hmm. people worry about it being a competitor, taking something oh, that, that well, but oh, yeah. if you were a trapper yeah. Yeah, right. in Russia mm -hmm. along the shoreline and you got a marten in your trap and this bird came down and stole your marten, mm -hmm. the skin, ate it, right. you wouldn't like stellar eagle and and they are persecuted by trappers but but generally speaking the problem is they're losing their habitat like right. the trees mm -hmm. because they only need to be around want to be around water the second thing is same problem that happened here in north america mm -hmm. and around the world most of the big predators are also in addition to being a fish eater mm -hmm. it's a scavenger right, right. and it will take the the remains of dead killed mm -hmm. carcasses, whether they're winter kills or oh, so yeah, hunter yes, kills. Yes, yes, okay. And so the problem with the hunter kills, mm -hmm. they have lead mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. They have lead in the gut and so on. And they, one of the biggest uh, killers of right, these right. eagles are, is lead poisoning. And the other thing is the accumulation of pesticides. And they, I, I was reading a study the other day about this bird where they found nine, uh, 18 dead 15 dead mm -hmm. stellars and three dead white-tailed sea eagles in a, in a region. Oh, and it turns out they, they had all died from pesticide poisoning. So their, their area is not very healthy. Um, there's been a lot of disregard for, for controls. Um, and, and so between poisoning, right. shooting, right. and so on, okay. they have the same kind of risks that, that we have. Okay. Okay, well... I think that sums it up very well, thank you. Well, uh, it's, it's a spectacular <laughs> bird, one of the sea yes. eagles, just yes. the biggest relative of our bald eagle and part of what they call a clad, C-L-A-D, right. meaning it's an evolutionary branch which they're kind of related. Mm -hmm. And the, the Eurasian white-tailed sea eagle, the stellar, yes. and our bald eagle fit yes. into the same David, group. And next year we're going to travel there to Kamchatka, right? It's a deal. Abs absolutely. Ah, it's yeah, it's, go it's the one place on my bucket list I haven't okay, got. So there you good. go. I'd love that. Okay, thank you. Talk today about which ego? Well, I thought we'd talk about... Okay. Well, very nice. I'm just... Okay, well, hang on. We just have to make a pause here quickly. Sorry, just make a pause quickly and um, just comment. So, yeah, that was David Hancock um, with a really beautiful contribution uh, which we recorded, which I recorded last night, uh, all about the stellar ego. And you can see we're very serious about going. So this is on our bucket list. And um, who better to travel with than David Hancock, right? So you can see how you can live, um, you know, even beyond 80 and just really be so passionate about life. This is what I absolutely admire about uh, David Hancock. I did see on the, um, I did see here on the YouTube chat that why don't we have a stellar eagle camera? I think that's a great idea. Maybe we should look into that and uh, maybe there's a way to make this reality. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Because actually this is where cameras are so superb just to watch and not interfere with wildlife. So I think that that was a beautiful uh, comment. So thanks for that. So now we're moving on to the most exciting part or not the most exciting part, but one exciting part is we have different contributions about how crazy is that. And these are, um, Wonderful contributions. We're going to show them. You uh, show them to you. There are about five contributions here, or exactly five. And uh, I'll get out of the way again. And um, what I'll do then is just read in the background. So let me just um, move myself out of the way and um, click on it. So the first contribution is called Southwest Florida Tongue Intruder, submitted by Lady Hawk. Who else, right? <laughs> An intruder with a damaged tongue. I've never seen anything like that. Quite remarkable. So remember the contribution now and remember the number. What we're going to do is afterwards we're going to vote, and it's going to be your vote. We're going to try and do a poll for the first time. Hopefully this will work. We're going to give you a link to a poll, and all you need to do then is to vote for the best. So all you need to do, do is remember five different scenes you're going to see and then vote for the one which you like most. I love all of them. That's what I can say. I find it very difficult. The first contribution from Lady Hawk about the um, intruder here.
So an intruder with a damaged tongue came into the nest several uh, times today. That was on the 23rd of, the, of, the, of uh, October in 2017. Harriet chased intruder out, intruder out two times and M defended the nest and gave the chase. And so that's what it's all about. Harriet and M15 defended the nest and territory as a team and fortunately no one was injured. Well, thank you for that, Lady Hawk. And here you can see some stills, right? So this is just about the story. As a, what is incredible that it is possible for the bird, who knows what happened here? It could have been a fight or it could have been caught on some fishing line or who knows what happened, right? But um, I'm always amazed at the ability of how these birds uh, make it. You know, it's, Here's another picture. So thank you very much, Lady Hawk. So that's contribution number one. If you like this most, just remember this is number one. So now we go to number two. So remember, this is all for the um, skull. Okay. Here we go. So this is contribution number two. It's called No Breaks. No Breaks. And it's quite, this is the Dale Hollow, <laughs> the Dale Hollow nest. River, river crashes, lands, it crash lands into a tree. Look at that, bomb, full into the tree. But he looks around, no concussion for this eagle. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. <laughs> Incredible. So they had no repercussions. They laid an egg, uh, first leg of the uh, egg of the season, full into the tree. Okay, so that was contribution number two. Thank you very much. That was a beautiful contribution. And now we come to the, there are two contributions from the DC nest this time. And this is a very famous one, actually. This was the rescue. This was called Rescuer's Kiss, submitted by Birdbrain. The backstory, during the evening of April 20th, the right leg of one month old bald eagle DC-4 became precariously lodged inside a hole within the outer rails of its larger stick 
uh, nest. The eagle was unable to free itself. And then comes a long story that finally, what happened is on the 21st of April, a rescue mission went there. The, the non-for-profit American Eagle Foundation and the U.S. National Arboretum immediately cooperated with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, and tree experts to, climb, uh, to, to plan the removal of the eagle from the nest. After being retrieved and lowered from the nest by professional uh, arborists uh, Matt and Marty, the eagle was initially assessed on the ground by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife biologist Craig and an experienced uh, a tree climber, but after further examination by a veterinarian, veterinarian Samantha from the Maryland Zoo in Baltimore, um, it was all, um, all clear they've been given presidential uh, treatment and uh, a physical checkup and radiograph revealed no permanent damage. So it went up again the same day, the same day as all the 21st at 5 p.m. Eastern time the eagle was placed back. Incredible story and it made it. Uh, so beautiful contribution. So that is contribution number three. So thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, that is the eagle 55, of course. No, sorry, that was, uh, no, sorry, that was bird brain 56. Uh, number two was the eagle 55. I beg your pardon. Dale Holler was the eagle 55. That's number two. And the third one was by bird brain 56. Good. The fourth one is also, <laughs> this is a really funny story. This is the missing moss. What happened to all our moss? Beats me. Well, the story, uh, I, there's not much I need to say, but this happened, uh, uh, this, this happened on, um, I think it, well, it was on the um, December the 8th, 27, uh, 2017. And this is submitted by Cheryl, by Cheryl, sorry. Cheryl. So, uh, very nice. The video is by Cheryl, but it was submitted by Susie Q. I beg your pardon. It was submitted by Susie Q, but the video is by Cheryl. That's how it is. But now you can see the solution. So, where did the moss go? <laughs> so, this is number four. If you like this most, then vote for number four. I'll show them again at the end, just quickly go through them and mention the names again so you can remember. It is too funny, absolutely. I can see the comments. <laughs> That's, it's, it's hilarious. So that was Susie Q, thank you. Video by Cheryl. And now the Northeast Florida nest with a contribution. The perfect branch. This was submitted by Sandy F. Now look at that. I'm a, she writes, I'm a camera operator at the Northeast Florida nest and my screen name is Arca underscore AEF. I have one video that is certain to please. Of course, it is not unusual for an eagle to bring a branch into the nest. Right. But how cool is it to see that, that, that one is being plucked from the tree, from their tree, of course, as Romeo does in the short video. So just look how he does this. There you go.
Okay, that's a beautiful contribution. So that was number five of the contributions. I'm going to quickly go through them again, okay? So just a quick one, okay? So the first one, the tongue intruder from Lady Hawk. That is the Southwest Florida Eagle Nest. That was the bird with the tongue, right? That's this one. That is the tongue intruder. If you like that one, vote for number one. Now the second one, this one, it's just... Uh, let's just get this in again. No brakes. This was from D Eagle 55. No brakes at the Dale Hollow Eagle Nest. A river crashes in to <laughs> right, in, right into the tree. So if you like that one, vote for number two. And now the third one, and that is coming to the DC Nest, and that is the rescue of DC 4. That was submitted by BirdBrain56. If you like that most, vote for number three. And next one, the case of the missing moss, <laughs> the squirrel mystery. That was submitted by Susie Q. If you like that most, then vote for number four. <laughs> and then finally, we have from the Northeast Florida nest, the perfect branch. <laughs> The Perfect Branch, submitted by Sandy F. And that is R-K-A-E-F. Um, so Romeo finds the Perfect Branch. Right, so let's get back to the main uh, screen again. Um, so how this works now is as follows, is as follows. So let me just explain. So if my, hel my um, dear helper Raptor Women would kindly put the link into the, um, uh, you know, in so go to this link, it's called survey.zasamedia.com and vote. Don't worry, you can put in your email, you can drop all that part, putting your email. All you need to do is vote a number from one to five. And this is a live survey. Now we hope it works. It's the first time we've ever done this. <laughs> so hopefully this will work. So just take a bit of time uh, whilst you go to the survey. There you go. Uh, 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 Jenny has just put it in there, survey.zasamedia.com. How do we submit votes? Just go to the website, okay? So you need to have a browser to go to this website. We couldn't find any other. YouTube doesn't cater these things, uh, nor does um, a Periscope. So that was the best way that we could find in order to do this. So ho hopefully this will work. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and hopefully it'll work. So again, number one is the tongue. Number two is no breaks. <laughs> number three is the, the rescue at the, uh, so the other one was at the uh, uh, Dale Hollow was number two, no breaks. The third one was uh, the DC4 rescue. The fourth one was the DC missing moss. And the fifth one was the perfect branch. Okay, so that's, those are the five. Number one, the tongue. Number two is no breaks. The third one is DC for rescue. The fourth one is the DC missing moss. And the fifth one is the Northeast Florida nest, the perfect branch. Okay, so let's hope. Yeah, copy, copy paste. Hopefully this works. Ah, there comes a link. Thank you, MSO, for putting the link in like that. That's it. That's it, you need to put the whole link in. So that's easier. Unfortunately for Periscope, this is a little bit more difficult to do because uh, I, you can't really press a link in there for anybody. Um, YouTube has the ability for do that. Worked for me, Jack says, hi Jack, my friend Jack is there. Jack and I are going to have a session. We're not gonna tell you why we're having a, um, a session when I come back from Florida. Uh, we're going to talk about a very special uh, subject that is close to our hearts. Uh, that'll be a nice surprise. Uh, so there'll be one more uh, broadcast next week, then I'm off to Florida, and then um, it didn't work, says Kathy. Mm, it didn't work. Cannot get from here. Okay. Now, it doesn't seem to work for everybody. Jani has put in the link again. So, um, hmm, maybe we're not perfect yet with this, but it's, uh, it's a test, right? I'm just going to wait one or two more minutes, and then we'll close. Um, it worked. Okay, some say it worked, some say it didn't work. 
Uh, well, we'll work on it. This is the first time. <laughs> okay. But it's fun, you know, it's so much fun to get your participation in this and see what you think and see who the winner is. And then uh, what I'll do, and hopefully this will work, uh, we'll go, that it, is, it was slick, okay. So Gretchen says it was slick, it worked. Susie said it worked for her, that's great, okay. <laughs> You have to type in the link in your browser. There you go. Yeah, yeah. We'll just take take another one two minutes for you uh, just to uh, to get it right. It doesn't work on my cell phone. Oh, Susan. <laughs> oh gosh, Susan. That's a big struggle. <laughs> okay. Nature Scoper Eric. I see some here. I see some of my friends there on Periscope. That's very nice. Very nice to see you. That's good. Yeah. Good to see you all there. So if you do have a, it's a bit more difficult to do from Periscope because you have to jump off uh, uh, and, and, and type in the link. Uh, it's much easier to do this in, in um, uh, Kathy said it's not working. Osprey Mama said it worked for her. That is good. I voted. Very good. Okay, I'm going to wait another one or two minutes and that's fine. Eric, thanks for, for um, getting your followers in. It worked for me, it says Turner Dizzy in Periscope. That's great. That's good. Okay. So it does seem to work. It does seem to work. Gosh. And thanks for taking survey. Yeah, we, we really are curious to see what you think. I'm so curious uh, to, to see how this poll is going to go on. You're welcome, Eric. It's good to see you. Really wonderful. Use cell phone Osprey. Well, there you go. So it does work on a cell phone. Wonderful. That's great. Worked for me on the map with Mac with Firefox. You see, everything is possible. It seems to be, seems to be working. In Russia, it's behind on <laughs> Gentleman Ghost. Gentleman Ghost, you are, you are ghosting around in, in, in both Periscope and YouTube. <laughs> Copy paste, yes, says Beach Girl. That is smart. That's exactly what you need to do. Susie Q is giving the link once again on YouTube. Could be getting overloaded. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's, I'm going to give it exactly another minute. Okay. I'm going to look at my clock now. One more minute. Okay. One more minute and then we'll call it a day. And then we'll do it. Okay. So last 60 seconds uh, to vote now. Another 45 seconds now. And then um, I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> Silly iPads. Yeah, iPads are not easy to do this with. It's true. Great job, Osprey, says Osprey Mama. Yes, and, and we can't, uh, can't wait. I mean, it, this has been incredible help from Kevin, by the way. Kevin, again, has been helping with this incredible. I'm so happy that we can offer this, uh, this uh, to you. So another 15 seconds. And then I'm going to, hopefully it works. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You want to come here? Come, come, Kate. It's okay. Come, sit here. It's fine. So, there go. we're going to see how this votes goes. So, Kate's sitting next to me now. We're going to see how this all evolves. Okay, so I'm going to... Let's see if this works. I don't know. I'm going to press to the poll results. Hopefully, hopefully. For, I'm going to load them now. And we're there. It worked. <laughs> Congratulations, Kevin. You are a genius. The total votes. Here is the result. The total votes are 95. Image number one, that is the tongue. Congratulations to Lady Hawk. You are the winner with 35 votes. Image number three got 25 votes. That was DC4's Rescue. Image number four gets 20 votes. That was the missing mass, <laughs> yes. Image number one. Uh, got seven votes. Hang on, what's going on here? The image... Did I get this wrong? No, sorry, image number three. Sorry, now I, you know what I sound like? I sound like none of these people who, who bugger up the Oscars. That's what you remember when they did the Oscars? I, I announced the wrong winner? Okay, that's me, right? So I beg your pardon. I can't even read properly. Image number three wins. <laughs> <laughs> With 25 votes, I'm terrible, I'm terrible. I take, I take all blame, okay? 
I think all blame. So I got the Oscars wrong here. Okay, I'm also the sinner. Image number three is DC Force Rescue. That's the post popular one. So sorry, I couldn't read it off the screen. So image number three wins, and then it's image number four with 20 votes. <laughs> oh, this is too funny. It's too funny. Okay, anyway, I hope you have a sense of humor, guys. I hope you have a sense of humor and forgive me. Okay, uh, you can read it very, very clearly. I have to show myself now and, and apologize to um, Lady Hawk. Lady Hawk, I'm going to send you, as an apology, I'm going to send you an image to you. Okay, my apology. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that is really miserable. So the winner is... And that was uh, num that was image number three. So now we now we have it. So this was submitted, and I'm looking at my God by Birdbrain56. So Birdbrain56, uh, you are the winner, right? You are the winner. So congratulations to you, Birdbrain. That was really marvelous. <laughs> that was great. Um, so that is the the video that has impressed most people. Very clear with 35 volts. So it was a total of 95 volts. This, this worked very well. <laughs> yeah, Lady Hawk, I see. Thank uh, you. Will, you'll get an image from me. Absolutely. So what I'm going to have now is Kate. She's going to roll the whole thing. Okay, so I'm just going to... Um, she's going to um, do that for uh, twice now. Once for the winner and once uh, for my own silliness for uh, Lady Hawk. So let's do this twice. So I'm going to see where are we now. We are here. There we go. Okay, so here's our wheel. I'm going to spin it. And Kate, you're going to say stop at some time. So let me just get to the screen here. So we roll. So the first one is for our winner. For the winner. Exactly. That is Bird Brain, the winner. So you just tell me when to stop. It's all up to you. Stop. Oh, this is the Port Hardy one. Let me show you. So Bird Brain, you are winning the, the an incredibly... Uh, in my opinion, one of oh. the best landscape shots that I have. So let me just um, get this in quickly for you. One second. Uh, where are you? No, that's this one. So there we are. There we go. That is the beautiful bird brain. This is the winner. I took this beautiful, this is morning mist. Uh, you can see the spider web here. So you're going to get a high resolution image here of an eagle showing in morning mist. They tell you don't. Um, ever photograph against light. I always say, pe tell people, don't uh, listen to uh, photograph books. I've never read any, okay? I don't listen to any. Just do what you intuitively do right, and that is appreciate nature, right? So that is, the, uh, that is for Bird Brain. Thank you for this beautiful submission. And now we will do one more for Lady Hawk. So let me just go back to... Uh, yeah, there's our wheel again. So one second, I'm just going to show us also. Get us in again. There we go. There we go. Okay, so here we spin for Lady Hawk, as my terrible apologies. And stop. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 a, that's, oh, a, that's, that's yours. Why have you got two years? No, you will not to. No, it's, yeah. it just happens. That's one. Okay. So Lady Hawk, you're getting again. So it's uh, through some amazing toss here. Um, well, that's Kate's magic has ah, worked here. So that is the Alaskan Eagle. So let me just put this up quickly and get into where is the Alaskan Eagle. Get myself out of the way and in here. So that is yours, Lady Hawk. There you go. Donations are kindly appreciated. Yes, I wanted to say that too, because we run completely here on, on, on my own funding. I can tell you that it's completely own funding. So I appreciate that. And do, don't forget, by the way. So thank you, Lady Hawk. This is your winning image. Thanks for that. It looks like being in Alaska now, doesn't it? <laughs> so, so there you go. So um, congratulations to all our winners. And now we get to the final. Yeah, stay here, please, Kate. We're going to get to the exciting uh, stage now where uh, nice to see that humans are not the only animals that make blunders. Yes, I'm glad I'm not running the Oscars. I'd be shrinking in the ground now. <laughs> I remember that one. Oh, my goodness. I don't usually watch this, but it's, it's incredible. So, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, good. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's go to the final stage, which is... Uh, fun. Be, uh, no, the question is what happens next. So I'm going to just get us a little bit smaller here. And so this is the final part. 
and then you get the uh, opportunity i'm already going to put the number up so that you can get your engines roaring here wait a second the dial in number here it comes here's the dial in number that is going to be the dial in number now people from periscope can also dial in you can also dial in and win something okay so i'm looking also at periscope you periscope have a few seconds advantage by the way to youtube you're seeing this Hi there, I can see, um, ah, Lainey is there, very nice, I see you there. So you at Periscope have a few seconds advantage over YouTube because the delay is much smaller there because the bandwidth is smaller, quite simple to explain. So I'm now getting to the final section here of this, what happened next? What happened next? And we are going to go to that section, what happened next? There we go. So um, let me just see my notes quickly, one second, so I get this correct. Ah, yes, there's nothing to explain here because it's, it's, it's quite easy. This is the decor, oh, this is the decora nest. Let me see if we got back feed there. Wait, wait a sec. Oh, we have somebody phoning in already. I cannot believe this. Wait, wait a sec. Um, one second. I've never seen anything like that. Let me just get this quickly. Okay, come again. There was somebody just calling in who says they know the answer before. Hello? One second. I'm just going to put you on live. That is very fast. Okay, one second. I just have to... You're so fast um, that I just need to... I didn't even expect anybody to answer so quickly. One second. Come on. I can't get down here now. Oh, wait a second. Uh, can't switch there. I need to switch to here. Right, there we go. Okay. Hello. With whom am I talking, please? This is Carolyn from Tanawanda, New York. Hi, Carolyn. Good evening. Very nice, for, very nice that you could join us. Thank you so much for joining. So how come you, you, you phoned so quickly? Do you know what my question's even going to be? <laughs> 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 Um, so my question is going to be, um, I'm going to show an image here about the decora nest, right? And the, okay. question, the question is, what happened next? So I'm going to show the second image. Um, and um, there you see, um, he, uh, this is the eagle goes to the branch. And then the question is, what happened next at that nest? Do you have any idea what happened next? This is quite a difficult one, by the way. This is really difficult. I would not have known. So I'm warning you, this is not an easy question. <laughs> what do you think happened next? So the, the, um, the eagle was sitting in the nest, then went to a branch. And what do you think happened next? Do you have any idea? <laughs> <laughs> You're stumping me. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Well, take a wild guess. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're the first one to call. And just take a, take a wild guess. This is not an easy one. This is not an easy one really does it have something to do with a branch no not really i'll give you a small hint something okay. happens with the weather okay i'll give you a small hint uh something happens with the weather i won't say more that's the hint now to everybody okay and the next callers who want to call in are uh, can gladly call in so something happens with the weather what do you think happens uh lightning no, the answer is no, it doesn't. Sorry about that. <laughs> but thanks for joining. Thanks for joining all the way from okay. New York. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, fine. okay, okay. that's fine. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so we need more calls, please. We need more calls. What happens next? I gave a hint here. I gave a hint. Something to do with the weather. Something to do with the weather. This is a really tough one. It wasn't lightning. What else could have happened? What else could have happened? <laughs> that is the question. Nobody dares phone in today. It's too difficult. This question is too difficult, I guess. Ah, here comes a phone call. Let's hear. Hello? Hello? Okay, I'm going to say when. One second, with whom am I talking, please? This is Swamp. Sorry, this is? Sorry, swamp. 
Oh, I uh, the connection is not very good. I, I, I couldn't hear the name, but um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so take a guess, please. Wind. Wind. wind a strong case. wind. The answer is no, it's not wind. So it's not lightning and it's not wind. But thank you so much for not participating. <laughs> thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Fine. Bye. Okay. So let's wait. Come on. Keep on. Here comes the next call. Hello? Hello? Hello, with whom am I talking, please? I, I can't hear you. What did you say? With whom am I speaking, please? With whom am I speaking? Oh, this is Becky. Becky, hi, Becky. From where are you calling, Becky? Uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, you're from Huntsville. That's great. That's where Kurt is at home with his, uh, with his uh, raptors, Rise Raptors, right? That's Huntsville, Alabama. Very nice. Well, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for participating. Wonderful. Well, can you, do you have any idea what, what could have happened here? What is the next scene? What do you think happened? Uh, there was a big gust of wind. There was a gust, big and gust no, of wind. I unfortunately, a big, big gust of wind. <laughs> unfortunately, the answer is wrong. It's not a big gust of wind. Something else happened. It's not. No, sorry. It sorry. started raining. Uh, the, get only one it guess. Started it started raining, it not, lightning. It, it was not lightning. It was not gust of wind. And I can't give you another chance because we have to get another. So it didn't rain. It wasn't lightning. And it wasn't, um, no, it wasn't uh, <laughs> that either. Sorry about that. An earthquake. No, 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 no. I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't let you guess all night because there are some other ones who, who are going to take a shot at this. Well, thank you so much for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Fine. Bye. Oops. Oh, that one disappeared. There was another one who just came in. Please keep on trying. Please, yeah, there we go. Hello, with whom am I talking, please? Who's there, please? Hello? What? Hello, who's there, please? Hello? Yes, hello. Can you hear me? I can. Who's there, please? Whom, whom am I talking to, please? I'm Virginia in Tucson. Ah, Tucson, Arizona. Very good. Hi, Virginia. Good evening. Do you, you heard there were so many wrong answers. Do you have any idea what happened here? I think it's snow. You got it. You got it. You got it. Got it. Give her a round of applause. You got it. It was snow. And that's what I'm going to blend in now. The next scene. One sec. Let's try and do it. If we can, there you go. That is the winning picture. You are right, Virginia. It was snow. That was excellent. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Good. So you. Um, so please don't forget to send an email. Either you can put it in the chat or to zasamedia at gmail.com. Right, zasamedia at gmail.com. I'll put it in later again, or we'll put it in the, ch uh, in, in the chat, so you are the winner. And that was a very difficult one this time. Thank you for participating. Okay, thanks. Right. Okay, thanks, fine. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, bye. Bye. Okay, well, that was Virginia. So we are going to now go back and toss the, um, I'm just going to uh, go over to the other audio. Yeah, there we go. So that was uh, th that was the contest. It was a difficult one this this uh, this week. A really difficult one uh, for the what happened next. It looks like confetti, as I can see those. <laughs> so we are once more. Let me just get my screen up here. So we are once more going to spin the wheel. Um, there we go. That should be spinning the wheel. And uh, so no more calls, please. Uh, let's just, so that's it. Uh, by the way, the email is zasamedia gmail.com. That is for Virginia. So please, Virginia, send us an email. Ah, there, Sherry put it out too. So send us an email. And now we're going to, uh, again, toss, uh, go ahead and toss. And it's going to be for Kate, again, to say stop. Now let's see, Kate, what are you going to do this time? Stop. Oh, Ooh. now which one is Ooh. that? I can't, oh, that's an interesting one. Now, this is a very interesting one. That is the eye. That is an artistic uh, contribution. So let's just open that one, Kate, and let me just get to that one.
but I first have to blend out the other picture, which I will do now. Yeah, here we go. So this is an artistic contribution. It is the eye. What you see there is actually my son's eye. It's quite a, quite a picture. So it's a beautiful one, and I put the eagle in there. Um, I love the colors of the iris, and I hope you like it. So congratulations to Virginia for participating, and thank you so much for, uh, for calling. And thank you to all of you really for calling us. So we're going to get to the final stage now. And uh, so thanks, thanks for all your contribution. And do remember to give us thumbs up, thumbs up, please. It's so easy to do it just on, uh, you know, just press the thumbs up. Uh, and um, if you will uh, want to donate anything, that's always kindly accepted or buy one of the images, that's fine. As I said, we're completely self-funded here and I got incredible work and, and the ultimate goal is to become a not-for-profit organization. Really, I, I would love to become a not-for-profit organization and run this education uh, and, 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 and really uh, bring this type of awareness uh, all over North America and eventually through the world. So, the final part now is, and that was some questions from our viewers, right? From questions from our viewers. So Kathy, who has contributed so much, has asked an interesting question, question here. Do eagles sense barometric pressure and prepare in advance for inclement weather? They seem to deliver a lot of fluff before weather, uh, temperatures fall. Well, I found that uh, question, Kathy, it's so interesting. I just called David Hancock uh, about an hour before the show starts. And he said he absolutely agrees they can sense this because they've seen many times where big storms came, major storms, and the eagles seem to sense it and seem to go for protection long before. Um, we've seen that uh, the, the horrific situations that they had in Florida, right? Uh, and how the nests have copped. I'm sure the, 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 the Northeast Florida and the Southwest Florida can tell you a lot more about this. I would love to hear their, have, hear their opinions. Uh, but the answer is definitely yes, they can sense it. Very good question. Sally writes, would it be possible to do a segment on lead poisoning of the bald eagle? This is a topic I believe that is brought to the attention of everyone and should not be uh, allowed by groups such as the National Rifle Association? The answer is absolutely yes. David Hancock mentioned lead again. It's a very serious and sad problem. I will, uh, I will do my best. And if you know anybody who is an expert vet biologist or anybody, please uh, um, give me the information. I would love to interview an expert on lead poisoning. I don't know anybody at the moment. But I'm sure there are raptor organizations that, that know this. So please take, take, um, send a, an email to Zasse, uh, Zasse Photo or Zasse Media again to, to my email. I just put it in here. Um, I do send an email in and I would love to, uh, to uh, do a whole session only on lead poisoning. You're absolutely right. That is a great point. Then Dennis and Stephanie uh, right here. Has there been any research done on how long siblings separate uh, before they go on their own ways? I've seen it locally and on videos everywhere, siblings. Great question. You know, I think that everybody asks this question. And I, I again pose this question to David Hancock, and his answer is very occasionally. From his decades of observation of eagles, they don't necessarily leave at the same time. They, they often are fed at the same time. We've seen it so many nests. They go there and then Ma and Pa go down. You've seen this in southwest, northeast from ground observers. You've seen it all over the Hancock side. I've seen it myself on the beach. You know, so many, um, so many times we've seen this. However, they, they, um, whether they really stick together, the answer is completely unknown. It is uh, David Hancock from his uh, experience says it would be very occasional. Okay, so it's not likely that they stick together very long. Okay, so um, yes, that is uh, one. Uh, the other question is, let me see. Yes, you notice that the eagles have dark beaks. No doubt they provide at what time, uh, time do they uh, turn fully yellow? Well, that is in the third year, right? You can see the transition clearly to go to the yellow beak. And then in the fourth, fifth year, you can still see the rim uh, of, of the feathers that as they get lighter and lighter to the sixth year and then they completely are indistinguishable from, from, from other eagles, right? Um, some other question here. 
very interesting too. Uh, that was raised in the chat room on the 19th of um, January. Are eagles ever threatened by a certain temperature level or the dew ball to insane <laughs> levels? You know, eagles are smarter than that. Again, I asked David Hancock and he says, eagles are very smart because we had that thing before. If it gets too hot, uh, if it gets too cold or too stormy, they escape, they move. You know, you, eagles are naturally scavengers and they usually start their salmon run way in Alaska and then move down south, right? And they do that very cleverly, so they will avoid very difficult situations. So they, uh, we've seen it in Dutch Harbor, Alaska. I mean, um, uh, Jack Molden, who's also around here, has seen horrendous situations with eagles. They, they are very resilient, probably uh, until minus 50 Celsius or somewhere similar in Fahrenheit, all the way up to temperatures in Texas, which, by the way, brings me to the final topic. What are we going to do next week? And next week, we're going to go all the way to Texas, to Webster in Texas, to Paul White. Paul White, uh, I'm going to interview him tomorrow. If you drive down south, just slightly southeast from Houston towards Galveston, this beautiful area in Galveston, you come past a place called Webster in Texas. And I'm going to interview Paul White tomorrow. He is incredible. And we're going to, I'm, I know you'll be delighted about this. He's been all over the news. He's very famous now. And we're going to feature Paul White's nest next week. So I hope to see you around. And also next week, what's very nice is we're going to see, we're going to talk about um, some more stats. I'm going to go back to Gretchen's statistics again, do another analysis and also take Judy Barrow's amazing statistics. Uh, hopefully I'll have enough time to do that. I want to do some thorough Excel uh, um, uh, data mining and see what we can learn from that. There'll probably be several sessions on that. So, and then thereafter, I'm traveling to Florida and I hope to see many of you there. I've, by the way, received some incredible invitations which I'll respond to from some Raptor Resource Center in uh, Orlando. Uh, and, and I will res uh, respond to that. I gladly accept all these uh, wonderful invitations. I wanted to thank you from my heart for all that. Okay, well, that brings me to the final stage. And um, uh, again, to say thank you to Kate. Thank you for being with us. And uh, uh, thank you to all my helpers. Thank you for all the beautiful uh, submissions from everybody. And my apologies for not getting the Oscars completely right. But I'll have another go at this, right? <laughs> we'll get the Eagle Oscars right next time. So thanks for being around. And um, yeah, let's see how long did we take? Nearly two hours. That was a long, lovely session. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next Friday. And um, have a happy Eagle Week and a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much.